Sodiacolics today is November 17, 2021. And, uh, and, 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 and,
So informal verification of closed loop systems are, as we discussed before, CPS cyber physical systems uh, pose a significant challenge for their verification and validation. So formal verification can be used to, to verify the correctness and safety of the automated system. And compared to the simulation uh, model, uh, the formal verification helps to computationally explore uh, even more scenarios in, in the system behavior. Here we are using uh, a symbolic model checker tool called new SMB. And the closed loop modeling has been proposed and it is a most comprehensive method to verify it. So reduce the complexity as well. Okay, so let's move on to the part one. Uh, here we introduce a tool chain that can be used for modeling and verification of cyber physical systems. And we discuss a framework of tool chain and how it can be applied in example case study. Uh, let's see the description of framework first and the tool chain. And later on, we'll discuss about how it's modeled and how this tool chain helps in. Uh, here is the description of framework. Uh, we can convert the IEC 64099 function blocks to uh, SMV code with the help of a, a FP2 SMV tool. Uh, we will describe uh, the FP2 SMV tool in the upcoming slide. Okay, so control function blocks in the real system uh, can be easily converted by this tool. And um, but in order to verify the complete system, we need a plan model and it should be connected. connected. Uh, so plan model, which is constructed for simulation, can be used for uh, formal modeling. But the resulting model may be too complicated because it has some continuous dynamics and uh, it's not in a discrete domain. So in the past, previous researchers used to develop a simplified model plan manually and somehow integrate with the model of controller generated by fp 2 uh, To address this issue, uh, we just introduced a notation in IAC 64099 for discrete state modeling and methodology for simplifying the hybrid simulation model to discrete state model. Uh, we also constructed a tool chain which combines design, simulation, and formal verification. Now, uh, let's see a real experiment uh, with help with the help of this tool chain. So here is the tool chain. Uh, it has an X control, uh, which produces the function blocks in XML format. And these files given as an input to the FP2 SMB tool and uh, it converts that fp to smv which converts the um, function blocks to the smv code the smv code is then fed to the new smv model checker for the verification and this new smv checks the ctl specifications if the specification is wrong uh, then it produces a counter example to make the specification uh, true, we need to analyze the counter example provided by new SMB, but uh, it's difficult to identify the variables uh, changed in every iteration. It's made, it's complex. So here we just use a new track tool, uh, which provides a better way to visualize or understand uh, the counter example. So it's actually it's converted convert the counter example to CSV file. So we analyze the error and after that fixing it again, we'll do the process again. Then here is a, uh, I have already mentioned about the uh, FP2 SMV tool, uh, which generates SMV model from function blocks and uh, FP2 SMV uh, takes uh, XML format inputs and it generates the SMV code with the help of ASM semantics. Uh, the tool converts basics and uh, basic and composite function blocks, and in, it includes additional features like limiting the boundaries of variables uh, to reduce the state space, 
and changing the execution order of FBs, deciding the input uh, event priority. And also we propose a non-deterministic transition notation has been added to the tool as a result of this work. So here is the uh, drilling station. Uh, now you can see how it works. Uh, there is a mechatronic component, it's called drill, uh, which moves upward and downward direction. Uh, and whenever the workpiece is de detected by the sensor under the drill, it moves downward and starts drilling. Once it complete drilling, it moves upwards and rest at the home position. Second one is uh, table and uh, the table uh, which rotates one fixed position to another. So the cycle is completed after rotate it when it rotates six times. When a workpiece is placed in the loading position, table can rotate to bring under the drill. Uh, now let's see the simulation model implementation of the system um, helps in this scenario. So here is the simulation model. Uh, in order to implement the simulation model, the controllers are connected exactly the same way as in the real configuration. The visual representation of the simulation model and the functional configuration is uh, shown in the figure. The development and visualization of CATS done with the help of NXT, developed by NST control. Mm. The simulation helps to understand the behavior of the system and it also helps to uh, sh show the error identified during the verification in simulation. However, there are some errors which do not appear in simulation but occur in the real system. So to tackle this, we use formal verification. Uh, in the past, model generators were, were developed uh, to convert IEC 64099 FB to such a model. So uh, FB to SMB can be used for this purpose. So however, applying the FP to SMB to a simulation model in IEC 64099 results in complex models due to continuous dynamics. That's why we are using, um, uh, we need, so we need to transform the simulation model to a discrete domain uh, in order to do the formal verification of the system. So let's see the uh, discrete state modeling approach, we can convert the simulation model to discrete state model with the help of a non-determinism. After that, we substitute the simulation model uh, with the discrete state model. <clears throat> uh, then, uh, yeah, we can see the uh, this process uh, in much detail. So this is a discrete state modeling approach in order to implement simplified and accurate implement accurate plan model for formal verification. Uh, we can use this method. The discrete state uh, equivalent of the simulation uh, configuration is uh, shown in uh, the figure. Here the function blocks simulating the drill and table is substituted by their same operations in discrete state domain. Um, so notation for uh, plan modeling. The state machine's implementation of drill model is uh, shown in the figure. In order to use the non-deterministic transition in the transition from the motion state, DD move to, uh, to the static state end. Here there are two states, home and end, and it moves to the uh, DD move to whenever the forward signal is given by the controller. Uh, but uh, it takes a random amount of time to reach the end position that is uh, shown in uh, shown as NDT signal. So NDT helps to provide an unknown duration of the motion from one state to another. Uh, and the other one is the error state. The plan may fail uh, whenever forward and back signals becomes true. Uh, and and it should be occurs simultaneously. So so we introduce error state which helps to identify whether the controller create this particular uh, scenario. So uh, let's see the um, non-deterministic transition in controllers. Non-determinist transition is helpful for the simplification of the controller models containing timers. 
in the drill uh, the drilling process is done for a several duration it's, it just takes a random time to drill it which is achieved with the help of a e delay a function block the function composite function block uh, consists of a real controller and e delay is shown in uh, the figure however the formal model of the uh, modeling of timers in smv is computationally hard uh, the delay can be uh, substituted by uh, the same entity signal that is non deterministic transition signal therefore we removed the timeout e delay and added entity as input the execution control chart of the real controller and the modified controller is shown in the other one so here there is a random amount of time it's for the drilling purpose so uh, the discrete state modeling um, in uh, in smv is uh, did like this uh, smv uh, provides a way to accomplish non determinist choice by providing set of values to the signal the first statement says the uh, declaration uh, declare the entity variable as a boolean type and the second one is initialization the way entity variable can either true or false in every transition uh, we are giving um, a provision to choose true or false this makes entity is unpredictable in each transition implementing uh, non determinism in every transition can be limiting by introducing conditions in next statement and if it's not required for the entity to choose values in every transition then we can design uh, like this in the next transition okay so here is the result and analysis uh, the formal model of the system is verified using CTL specification. While testing the CTL specification in new SMB, we found the first statement is false and it is possible that the drill can rotate while the drilling process is going on. While executing this specification, new SMB gave a counter example uh, that uh, contradicts the statement. And the counter example generation for the specification took around uh, uh, 26,000. Uh, seconds to complete. Uh, we tested the same logic in the simulation and the table is rotated from its current position to another while uh, it's drilling. Uh, so the real system also exhibits the same issue. Uh, we fixed the issue by analyzing the counter example. Um, after that, uh, we verified the CTL specification again and this time USMV gave the true result. Uh, the modified object is tested in real object as well and the simulation of the system and it was behaving as we expected that is uh, table was not able to uh, rotate while drilling is going on in order to identify the whether the controller produces forward and back signals true at the same time and the second specification is used after executing the specification you must produced the true the ECC of the drill model is never go to the error ECC state. That is, controller never produces a forward equal to true and back equal to true simultaneously. Okay, now let's see uh, the plan model generation from event logs. Uh, here is, is the introduction to the plan model generation. Previously, formal model of the plant is constructed manually. Uh, but it would be great if it's possible to build the formal models automatically. So how to generate this uh, plan model automatically? Maybe process mining, there is a technique, uh, can be used to extract the process logs from a uh, process from the event logs. That is, it's, it is possible that the, to extract the logic of the plant with the help of a trace file. Nowadays, uh, simulation models are widely used for the manufacturing systems. Uh, they are popular for the purpose of illustration and virtual commissioning, etc. Et the simulation model doesn't ensure 100% verification and validation, uh, but we can record the event uh, with the help of a simulation models. So here we explore uh, an op approach to automatically generate the plan model control system from traces of digital data and ensures that the generated formal model consists 
almost the same plant behavior. Uh, now let's see the uh, experiment and uh, how it can be done. So here is the proposed solution. The solution was as follows in the figure. Uh, the digital twin communicates with the controller, which is designed in IEC 64099 standard with the help of a NXT control software. And the function blocks represented representation of controller in XML file uh, is then fed to a FP2SMV tool. And we know that it generates uh, SMV code for the controller and it provides a kind of uh, structure skeleton structure for a plan model and it can be used to incorporate the closed loop verification of whole system the digital twin application records uh, the behavior of the plant and the output from the application is added to the trace file uh, that is uh, contains all events as a log log file and this uh, log file is consists of a uh, road test describing the behavior of the plant, plant. and the model generator uh, it's an algorithm uh, it's according to the model file uh, means according to the depending on the order of the recorded actions in the trace file it generates a model the formal model of the plant is then uh, added to the smv skeleton which provided by the sp to smv tool and we continue the verification process uh, using new SMB. Uh, the here is the case study. Um, it is a INAS system. The test bench is located at Alto University. It's a small scale industrial production scenario and is used for the development and uh, testing of uh, industrial automation techniques. It includes some pneumatic operators such as jacks, grippers, uh, conveyors, like that. And the implementation of INAS has been used, um, it's developed using uh, visual components in a 3D simulation environment. Uh, in this research, the simulation model is connected in the loop uh, with the automation controllers. In the figure, it shows uh, the visual representation of a digital twin. Uh, the major components are uh, uh, the main plant and uh, AGV, automated gated vehicle, and uh, IRB. And the following part briefly explains major software applications is used. The controller controller of the plant is created using NXT Studio, and the controller is connected to the plant in visual components via OPC UA communication protocol so that the controller can receive the updates from the plant as well as it can control the plant through the various signal. So here is the close to verification of a plant model from a digital twin. Uh, the process is to reach this goal split into following parts, the trace generation from digital twin. Uh, in visual components, whenever the action is occurred, occurs, uh, it records the event to the trace file and each event contains uh, timestamp subsystem component and action and the model generation from the event log that's the second one and here the basic smv code structure of the plan model is created with the help of a model generator algorithm the model generator sorts the trace and uh, declares and initializes each components variable and Finally, the transition of each variable is identified by analyzing each entry in the trace. Uh, and the third one is the embedding the plan model to SMV code structure provided by SMV code. Uh, then finally, updated SMV code is given for the verification purpose. Uh, but here we are not generating uh, as any state machines it directly converting the event loss to a smv and uh, combines with the uh, smv generated by the fp2 smv of a controller and we are going for the verification purpose here is the workflow diagram um, we are trying to implement a monitor plan model and controller from event loads the work diagram is partially implemented one of the developed method 
from this warp cloud diagram is uh, described uh, here. Uh, here is the state machine generation from event logs. I have already mentioned in the previous proposed solution, the SMV code is directly created from the event log and after that it's combined manually. So uh, the state machine generator was not created at all. Uh, so it, this makes it difficult to understand the system behavior, what is generated. It's uh, difficult to identify whether it's have the same behavior as the uh, plan model. Uh, and uh, also it's uh, difficult to verify with the existing tool chain. So uh, this event log can be uh, recorded in any way. So it can record using digital twin. And also, otherwise, we can record tracing by running a simulation model. And otherwise, we can even run the um, uh, connecting the controller to the real system and record the data. Then uh, the Prom is a popular tool for process mining. Prom has uh, several plugins for extracting the process logic and pre-processing and other visualization. So here we are using a prompt tool uh, and takes a event log and uh, using an alpha algorithm, uh, alpha algorithm actually which converts the event logs to a pattern net. And the FSM construction can be done using um, reachability analysis. So here is that experiment. And uh, here we are using a two cylinder example it major components are uh, horizontal and vertical cylinder. The simulation model of the system is developed using next controls uh, HMI. And the event log is constructed uh, by running the HMI on an NHC studio via OPC UA communication protocol. So here is the basic structure of the event log. It has process ID, timestamp, component, action, uh, the process IDs will be different for uh, each uh, HMI run. And the component is the, uh, it shows the which part of the system. That is whether it's a horizontal or a vertical cylinder. And action means uh, which is an event or a, any condition, something has occurred. So here is the process mining uh, using PROM. Uh, the, Event expressed in CSV format uh, should be converted into a sensible HCS format in order to apply the alpha algorithm. Alpha algorithm uh, is used to develop the models in the form of patternets. So here is the patternet which obtained from the previous law. Uh, it has a, a start and end position. And uh, if we need to con identify uh, the, we need to convert the convert into final state machine, we are going for a reachability analysis. So here is the reachability graph, which is constructed using pipe two. And initial markings of the uh, patternet is uh, given. Uh, here, we need to give it two tokens at the start in, a, in order to fire the uh, transition. Uh, so in the reachability graph is pretty accurate and uh, this can be used to create the ECCFA plan model. So here is the conclusion and future plan. Uh, we implemented monitor and uh, plan model from an event log for a simple two-cylinder system. And the developed tool chain is help, uh, which helps to evaluate the uh, uh, generated plan model. And the accurate implementation of a formal model is uh, necessary to identify uh, all possible flaws in the system. So the models, uh, it, and it can be used for a continuous development and evaluation of uh, the control systems. And uh, the, it will be very helpful for the developers because this tool chain can um, uh, can be directly converted into a formal model and we can check the um, specifications and we can correct it and uh, do the verification again. The developers working on the complex uh, system can be used uh, for this. And the existing functionalities of FP to SMV along with the non-deterministic transition in function blocks helps to provide a similar formal model of the system. Oh, 
then uh, the models uh, uh, here are not based on time. So timing problems due to different sets, uh, different set of time scales of controller and planned cannot be identified by this approach. So the extension of the notation to a timed automata uh, can be added for a future work. Uh, then we need to make sure that the digital twin, or uh, if any, if we are recording the event log, all possible traces in the plant. Otherwise, uh, if you miss some, uh, there should be a method to record uh, all possible traces. Otherwise, the verification process may fail. Uh, then ensuring the digital twin contains all problematic traces uh, that are possible in the plant could be the next step in future. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Midan. So, dear colleagues, uh, uh, thank you, Midan. Uh, your question, please. Yeah. You may <coughs> send your questions, ask your questions uh, by chat box. Okay. Or uh, by uh, raising can, 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 can I have just a, a short uh, word before? Uh, we start the question session sorry yeah uh, i i just wanted to congratulate uh, vladimir you with uh, organizing this uh, nice seminar and i think we have uh on board today um really people from different places joining and i took liberty to invite some of them uh so we have uh, some people from sweden from Lulu, joining from Lulu and joining from Eskil Stuna in Sweden. Uh, we have also people from Alta University in, in Finland. Um, we have Victor Dubinin, our uh, collaborator, Professor Dubinin from Penza State University in Russia, um, with whom we work on this uh, last part of Midun's work on, on, on um, process mining. And uh, uh, last but not least, Midun is joining from India, so we have like almost a global <laughs> coverage in this seminar. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that was just just a short uh, remark. Okay. Sergey, uh, you raise your hand, please, your question. Mm, hello, and thank you for the presentation. Yeah. But I have uh, some questions, uh, and the, the first one is about the definition. And uh, could you please provide us with the definition of cyberical physical system? Because uh, uh, there are IoT systems and cyber physical systems, such acronyms are very popular. And uh, could you please uh, show us the difference between cyber physical system and IoT system? Uh, here we are mostly concentrating on the system. Uh, it's a, some mechatronic component and uh, with the embedded logic inside. So it's like a IMC, intelligent mechatronic system, and it can be uh, uh, portable and placed in anywhere and can be used. So uh, it can communicate wirelessly uh, using the PLC switch inside. So uh, it makes uh, the system to communicate with uh, uh, all other uh, systems and even with the IoT systems as well. Um, and this makes uh, uh, to provide um, more reconfigurability and uh, these things. So uh, the IoT systems can be uh, implemented and, and com communicate with uh, this uh, cyber physical systems, uh, I hope. So it can connect it and uh, use it uh, with the several methods. Okay, according to you, you said that uh, the communication is the main ability of uh, the uh, function yeah. of cyber physical system. Okay, and uh, another question is uh, could you please provide us with the definition of uh, a closed loop yeah uh, so uh, here uh, the control systems and the plan model uh, there are uh, two things are there uh, then if you need to 
the plan can take input from anywhere. So uh, it can have the different types of values uh, which coming from the outside world, and it will be having different inputs from uh, from the various range. Maybe if we are taking some temperature values or something, so it will be having a lot of different values which comes from uh, from set of values. Uh, that would be more. So if it connected in a closed loop so maybe the controller will be operating in a certain region so we just need to uh, only concentrate on the particular region uh, where the plant works so we can limit it uh, the state space mean uh, uh, using like this uh, something related to that so if you are using some temperature sensor so maybe we are operating only in uh, some uh, 10 to 50 degrees or some somewhere like this, then we don't need to con consider about the other part. So closed loop, uh, which helps to uh, make it the system um, less complex and it helps to uh, uh, do the uh, verification in a more simpler way. Okay, for me, it's just the contradiction with the definition because I know the definition from control theory and the control loop is uh, famous with uh, such feedbacks and uh, there are closed loop and open loop and uh, and you have just said that uh, on closed loop it is just for reducing the space for verification and it is uh, unusual definition, uh, definition I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, dear, dear colleagues, just, just questions. I have a question about terminology. Uh, dear Midan, uh, please uh, define uh, what do you mean uh, when you talk about uh, digital twin? Uh, I know yeah. there is some uh, new terminology about digital twin, digital shadow, or just computer model. What is the difference maybe? What is uh, your definition? Oh, it's, yeah it's like a digital tin uh, can, can, like can you show uh, can you show the slide with the we use digital twin or maybe yeah yeah okay on your presentation Yeah, actually, yeah. here are some pictures of uh, digital twin. Uh, it's a um, some it's at almost the same replica of a, a, a model which is there in the Alto University. Uh, but I don't have the video or something right now. Uh, but these are the parts which is uh, used. Then this can be connected and uh, via uh, our uh, the controllers and uh, it works uh, almost at similar like to the real plant how it works so, so digital yeah. twin is just a, a simulation model yes with uh, visual yeah. visualization ability yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you thank you yeah. and uh, again what is the difference between data process mining and so-called data mining uh, it's actually data mining, uh, which uh, is a it's a broader one. Um, we are extra. It is one of the technique uh, is the process mining, uh, which comes under the data mining. Um, in uh, it's uh, data mining actually it have uh, several algorithms also used, and here uh, from the data we'll mine some some something called some information, new information and we'll predict it uh, according to the the data which is uh, which is with us so uh, we have the whole data set and we'll analyze the data and we'll get a particular solution we'll predict something using some supervisory algorithms or unsupervised algorithms so we will get a uh, uh, we will get a solution from that so uh, process mining is one of the uh, data mining method uh, which is used and the process mining 
it's actually used uh, it has a order of set of events uh, that can be anything it's maybe in manufacturing systems or any other project environment there will be having sequence of actions so there is a data in the so according to the order of the execution events uh, uh, the process mining algorithm there are different types of processing and mining algorithms these algorithms will uh, identify uh, the process uh, which is happening inside the data log and it gives uh, 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 some form in the form like that what is the process so uh, it's actually a, one of the example for the data mining method and uh, there are several process mining algorithms alpha algorithm inductive algorithm inductive miners alpha sharp alpha, like that uh, several algorithms are there so it's a kind of a data mining method uh, and it's used for this to get the process or extract the logic from the processes, from the event logs. Uh, there it can be used widely open, used for many things, even for prediction or other um, evaluation, identifying uh, other scenarios. It, it, uh, there are a lot of algorithms which can be used for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sergey, please, your question. Again, uh, thank you again. And uh, the another question could be uh, about functional block notation. Because uh -huh. uh, you said that uh, this notation is your input notation, and uh, from this notation, you are able to generate further models. And uh, have you compared this notation with other notations, other industrial notations? Like, for example, I can uh, notice MATLAB notation and, uh, for example, notation of Ptolemy tool created by Edward Lee. And uh, have you compared this notation with other notations for cyber physical systems? Mm, no, no, I didn't use that. Um, ah, okay, so you, later, I can try it with that. So maybe that would be also helpful. Thank you. Because you presented some diagrams and uh, it's hard to follow them because uh, they are yeah. small and uh, it's hard to obtain the overview just by seeing your slides. Just, okay, uh, okay. just yeah. uh, a remark. And uh, another big question is uh, about the usage of uh, floating point data types. As I see, you work with uh, discrete systems so you use only integer types and uh, if you uh, would able to provide like smoothing behavior behavior you should uh, use floating point types and uh, like uh, differential equations and uh, so you will work with uh, much huge models that you have and uh, have you tried uh, to work with floating point types uh, no, I was just tried with only the integer point values and was uh, uh, trying to implement uh, those things, uh, but never tried with the floating point right now. Okay, so I can I can consider that you work only with uh, toy models, not the real models, because uh, real models of cyber physical systems obviously work with floating point yeah. types. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and uh, the last okay question of discussion <laughs> really because there is a digital analog conversion and analog to digital conversion yes. is mostly discrete okay and uh, the last please, question please, from, please. From it's okay. uh, about the process mining this uh, famous i think approach now and uh, you said that you are not creating uh, uh, state automata, uh, fin state automata, you create uh, a Petri net yeah. and uh, you said that uh, you use some algorithm to create this Petri net. Maybe yeah. it is famous, but I don't know. And uh, the question yeah. is uh, uh, how to, how you decide uh, to create a new state? Uh, what is your new state? which you uh, made. 
We yeah, don't. Please, please show us the slide with. Uh, because to, to create a model, you should create a set of states and transitions between them. And uh, how do you define a state? Uh, actually, that is uh, described in the alpha algorithm. It's the most uh, common algorithm, and it has a paper also regarding that. So it's a quite uh, it's a algorithm it's quite complicated to explain right now so mostly uh, i will provide you the details so you will get a better idea about how to use that oh, okay for me just uh, uh, yeah just yeah the usage of uh, pattern nets is like uh, uh, some it 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 is very old and uh, it's not i think used well in the software engineering and uh, our researchers work with script, script, script structures. So if you change any variable, you create a state and uh, it is, uh, I think it is more easy to create a set of uh, states in a script structure and then transition between them. But it is just more my point. Yeah, actually, now with this process is everything is going on right now. Now we are also in the middle of this thing, just uh, creating the checking the minor algorithms and how it's created. So maybe instead of Peternet, maybe we can change it uh, to a better one and uh, do the analysis again. So we are. This is also as a partially done. So we are also working in progress on this. Okay, for yeah. me, just uh, you create yeah, uh, a set of state, yeah. a set of states, but. Uh, Obviously, while the simulation, the system could not visit some of states, and uh, you you just uh, create a representation of the system, but not the model of the whole system, because of yeah, uh, yeah. testing and uh, it uh, to yeah, prove. Actually, a uh, small part of the system only developed right now, and after that, you need to integrate it together and see how it properly behaves, whether it's creating correctly or not yeah because yeah, that's, uh, when, uh, that's things, uh, it's a hard part to be done <laughs> yes because uh, uh, even the errors in cyber physical systems are done with uh, just a set of actions with very small probability and uh, if you test uh, them so you can even you can not you cannot uh, visit all the possible states, so you just uh, make some guarantees about your system, but uh, it is not a certification, like uh, it is just uh, yeah. testing and uh, it is uh, not more than testing. Yeah. Even if you use uh, uh, formal methods, but uh, you yeah. create uh, the representation of the states, just the representation. Okay, thank you. It's all my questions. Yeah, thank you so much for the comments. Thank you. It, it, yes, it's what must my questions, which way you can ensure that you, you can, uh, in practice, uh, compose, create a model uh, just by uh, observation of event. It's, uh, it's uh, just not, not abuse, not abuse task. And my, my question is about, uh, please describe your, your plant, drill. Uh, for example, how many discrete inputs, how many discrete outputs, how many analog inputs, outputs. Can you uh, describe your, your drill system? Uh, the drill how complex system. it is, yes. Okay. Oh, slide you just just number of inputs or outputs. Uh, you is... mean uh, the system, drill system? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's what's like uh, it's a working behavior or uh, how the specification? Went uh, how, how many input uh, outputs uh, the system uh, has? Yeah, okay, here. Uh, and what kind? It's just an analog system, or do you have some uh, discrete inputs or outputs? 
Yeah, here we can see the controller uh, which gives the inputs from the drill driver. It's like it's have a lower signal. It's a Boolean type and uh, okay. raise signal and drilling on its true or false uh, relating to that. And it's, it's uh, also Boolean, Boolean signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. Boolean state. Yeah. So it's a table which has a one input. It's for rotating the system. So it's actually when the motor is turned on, it will go to one cycle like that. Yes. So uh, a summary: What is number of input outputs, digital, analog uh, signals? Yeah, it's a, uh, we can have as much. We it's a, it won't be an issue, but. Uh, if the number of variables which increases, then there will be a problem for new SMB to uh, do the analysis. It takes uh, more time to do that. Uh, so uh, maybe that uh, variables, if it's increasing, then uh, maybe it's limited. Uh, then in this system, we are here, we are using ice blocks. So uh, each ice block is connected to that particular part of the system. And it has only four inputs and four outputs. Uh, but we can add more if he needs uh, more input or output. Okay. And how many, uh, what is the uh, algorithm of the, uh, this plant? You have uh, uh, this, some uh, slide. Uh, I don't write down the number. Uh, the, no, not in some conventional yes like this yes um, yeah yeah okay here uh, here is a uh, we have a mod model so it, we assume that it has a two state it's having a home and the end position so it's a drill controller or so um, it can have a forward signal comes in then it can go to the move to state. So, but uh, here the DD move to and DD return is a uh, signal. Uh, it's a motion state, means it won't directly go to the end state. It goes first to the intermediate state that is called uh, DD move to or DD return. And it uh, we are using an NDT signal. So whenever this NDT signal comes only, it will go to the end state so ndt signal uh, will be different in each transition so it takes some random amount of time to reach it so it's like whenever it's forward is signal is came then after that it moves to the uh, ndt then goes back uh, and whenever the back signal is come it go to the another motion state and waits for some time then only it will reach to the home state it's not directly comes uh, directly to the home to end and end to home. And here there is an error state uh, whenever the forward and back signals goes and it goes to the error state. Uh, it's designed like that. Then if it's in the stop state, it's like whenever it's uh, forward and uh, not forward and not back, it will go to the stop state. Then uh, if you change the signal, it uh, moves to the other position. So it's just algorithm for the whole system, not no, just, no. just we use, just we use for the just software, for the yeah, controller, controller, yeah, control. controller, controller. Ah, what about uh, plant model? So, so sorry, colleagues, I, sorry, I, sorry, want, sorry. I want to uh, correct. This is not algorithm. This is a plant model. What you see yeah. now on screen yes, is yes. a plant model. Yes, yes. And it is it is a plant model of only one part of the plant because we have a kind of multi-closed loop architecture. We have two mechatronic or three mechatronic components. For each, we have its own controller. And for each, we have its own plant model. And then they all communicate one with another. And this is actually main point of applying this method. I want to a little bit like step in. Sorry. Uh, of course, I want to answer all, 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 all the questions. questions. This one. Uh, this one for the controller, this one for the plant. Okay, okay, okay. Thank, Thank you, Valeria, for, for your explanation. Thank you.
Yes, yes, I see. And what is uh, the list of uh, the requirements you plan to verify? Yeah, see here the requirements that we have tested. I see you use uh, some kind of uh, linear t temporal logic to formulate. Yeah, to yes. For this one, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, how many requirements do you have? Uh, I had used some several uh, used some several ten to fifteen requirements or something. I have checked, uh, but I only took uh, these two because one of them gives a false result and gives a counter example. It's a uh it uh, actually what it does while drilling uh, the workpiece there is a chance that uh, the table can rotate so uh, but it shouldn't rotate otherwise if it's uh, rotating while it's drilling then there is a chance that the drilling um, that workpiece or get damaged or drilling bit can be damaged so that specification we have concentrated uh, so, uh, while checking this uh, specification, we got a counter example, and this, uh, the, and this, in this counter example, it has a several. Uh, we got the point that we need to uh, lock. We need to send a block signal from the uh, one. Con uh, there are two controllers: drill controller and the table controller. So, while drilling the process, the drill needs to send a block signal. Then only uh, uh, this system, whole system, will work. So we fixed that thing and again tested on the real system. So it's uh, work. It was working correctly at the time. And the the second specification is was more related related to when the forward and back signals comes true at the same time. So when the forward and back signals comes this uh, at the same time, then it should go to the error state. So if the controller creates some particular state like that. Then, uh, so we are using the second specifications in order to verify whether the controller creates uh, forward and back signals at the same time. So uh, that one was uh, true. Uh, there was no issue with that. Uh, but the other thing was wrong when we designed the control system for the first time. Okay, I'm, I'm to, my, my question is about uh you speak about process mining uh, and uh, my question is about wh where uh, do you get uh, your requirement from maybe uh, there is some requirement mining or some, something like this or uh yes who, so who, the... who, who, who give you the requirements uh who gave uh, the requirement who give you requirements so oh, maybe my my thought is about you have process mining yes you uh, observe yeah. the event and you create some model of the uh, plant yeah. and uh, the question is maybe do you have some kind of requirement mining uh, uh, in your pipeline in your uh, tool chain and uh, this, the, what? Uh, let's see uh, this uh, slide number twenty. Uh, I see no requirements. In my opinion, there must be some kind of requirements to verify. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, slide number twenty. It's very really good 20, slide. Okay. Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Model so, result. Where is requirement in this uh, scheme? Yeah, yeah, okay. So here the, I didn't add the requirements and the specifications what we have checked. Just we created the model and uh, I forgot to add the um, specifications for this one. Uh, uh, actually, we have manually created some uh, specifications. Uh, here we have, we have used the INAS uh, plan model. So uh, we were checking that it designed only for the conveyors. There are six conveyors in this uh, system. So we were checking that whenever the conveyor one is started, the second one should be uh, also started. So like that, we have uh, took some uh, conditions, uh, specifications, and checked. And also, there is a, 
uh, some jack and gripper. So whenever the gripper is gripping uh, the position, uh, the uh, uh, the particular workpiece, then it should need it should uh, place after some time. Uh, so some specifications we have checked uh, here also using this uh, verification uh, using this approach. So the requirements which we identified by ourselves and uh, we checked uh, this this probably one of the good specifications or some of the possible possi uh, specifications but uh, the, I don't know about much about the requirement mining and uh, what are the requirements needs to be checked automatically. Yes, okay, I see, but uh, slightly thoughts some. Uh, okay, uh, uh, maybe some few slides, few seconds. Third, maybe my question is about what kind of uh, errors uh, you find in practice, uh, errors between um, maybe um, similarity between plant model and real uh, plant and the real plant. <laughs> Can you yeah. provide some yeah. example? Yeah, while creating the uh, plant modeling, um, maybe it's like uh, for the input, so which is increasing, uh, then the model uh, becomes too complicated to analyze, even in the if it's in the better net form. So the analysis becomes uh, much harder. We don't know that whether this the created uh, plan model, whether it's exactly same, it's uh, almost behaves same like uh, real or not. So it's difficult to identify the logic, uh, what is created. So most of the times it creates, uh, uh, even for the different even laws, it uh, creates different uh, models and uh, this model actually doesn't provide uh, all scenarios if you if, if you missed some event log if any present scenarios is missed in the event log uh, then it creates a some plan model and uh, it has a other type of models are creating so it's uh, we need to analyze the all possible scenarios of uh, working condition and we need to run it and we need to create the whole uh, log then we if we create it then it might possibly get a good more plan model but it, it needs to be continuously developed then only the plan model also behaves good otherwise we will get a um, uh, maybe this will fail for a, another controller or other methods as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, colleagues, your question. My, and my question about uh, time intervals, uh, I uh, please uh, explain. Uh, for example, you uh, observe uh, some uh, time delays or latency between intervals and uh, yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. which way you 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 con contract the model? Which way it influences on the model? You yeah okay. Uh, so here we are using a um, drill cylinder and a drill controller. Then the drill controller, which actually uh, drills for a particular amount of time, maybe for three seconds or five seconds, we can set the delay, but. Uh, if you model this thing in a SMB, uh, it's not uh, implemented right now. This uh, delays not cannot be right now. It cannot be converted using MP to SMB2. So here we are using uh, the same logic, uh, some random amount of time uh, giving for uh, this drill cylinder. So here, instead of uh, using um directly the time at seed here actually we will get a proper three seconds or five seconds it will jump out to the down state uh, but uh, here um, maybe after one second or two second or even with the uh, it's a random amount of time we cannot uh, set that 
so then after some time it's jump out to the system actually this one did only to reduce the complexity and mostly it's at least looks behavior and for the for when it comes to the verification purpose uh, if it's uh, uh, we can do the verification properly but if we need to check the particular seconds three seconds four seconds if the in time intervals are also important then this method is uh, won't be applicable so uh, it's we need to incorporate this delays as well as to directly convert into the fp to smb then it could be the it could that this two chain would be the best solution to do this okay thank you thank you yeah colleagues yes, uh, I, I had some questions yes hey. Uh, yes, hello, Medan. Uh, my questions are mostly about the new SMV system. I understand you've been using it extensively, yes. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, earlier, Vladimir has asked you about the number, the possible number of inputs and outputs the system can have, and you said we can have as, as many as we, as we want, and it won't be an issue. Uh, and my question is, uh, is there no limit, uh, no principal limit for the new SMV system uh, on the number of yeah. Uh, variables yeah. yeah there is a limit uh, because uh, if it uh, goes more then uh, it has uh, this chance to explode even for the if we did if we are using the variables and uh, integer variables or something we, if we are using then there is a chance for the state explosion uh, but i don't remember or exactly remember what is the uh, how it's how it how, how many inputs and uh, it's not about uh, mostly on the number it's about uh, number of inputs and as well as the range of the input values so uh, not sure uh, how what is exact number or how when it will explode but if it goes it's uh, um, mostly will uh, um, it, it, there is a chance that for the explosion if you are uh, using more variables as well as the range of variables if it's increasing if it's you're using zero to hundred then if it comes to the floating point number of values then uh, the verification time also will take a uh, long time because uh, for we if we, we uh, analyze some other systems as well as with the new smb by converting the fp to smb maybe it took so, uh, one or two days to even to complete it means to verify one specification itself so it uh, might take a long time duration three days something like that so uh, in order to do that we need to reduce it, the complexity and uh, otherwise it might take long time so, so it may uh, take long time but uh, is it guaranteed to complete at all uh i i'm not sure about that more, more if it's totally more than uh, it's a more number of inputs and it comes but uh, but if it's uh, more number of inputs and the range of the values are increasing at a particular point of thing then it it won't even given result i think okay uh, the reason for the question was uh, is that uh, if i remember correctly in for example spin model checking system in promo you have uh, a specified yeah. uh, limit like i don't really remember like a hundred variables and no more something like that and the yeah, system yeah. just won't allow you to do that so there is no yeah. such principle limit in new I, I i don't know actually i'm not sure about that um maybe i will check it uh, uh i was no uh, i don't know i don't remember exactly so i can cannot answer correctly on this thing Okay, thank you. And uh, another question about uh, the 26,000 uh, seconds. You had this number on one of the slides. Uh, yeah, that, that is for that particular specification. So this is, re this is real time. You had to wait for the system to complete model check. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, not just uh, the counter example generation, but the whole model checking process for this two example. Uh, the yeah, it generates counter ensemble uh, after this much seconds. Uh -huh. And uh, well, what kind of system did you use to run this? Just uh, uh, like a I, PC? Yeah, here I have used uh, my system with the, it's a small system. It's a Core i7 10th generation system with the processing. Uh, it's not a uh, big server or something like that. Uh, 
or it's a system which is a personal laptop or uh, but the processor is a core i7 and 10 uh, intel 10th generation so it's pretty typical pc just yeah yeah so okay thank you thank you very much that's yeah. it and what about the memory consumption uh i didn't check i don't Memory in this case, it's a new SMB. I think it's uh, not that much important. If it comes to the spin, I hope it's having the problems. Uh, but here, uh, I, because of that, I didn't check the memory consumption. It actually takes morely the timing. So I was uh, checking uh, the to reduce the time uh, in order to check the uh, specification. Uh, but uh, memory consumption, I don't know how to check it currently so uh, maybe we will check it uh, for the next time and uh, we'll get a, if it's uh, having a properly some issues uh, then we need to consider about that so thank you for asking that thank you um dear madam my question is about uh, which way do you define by observation of clocks you just observe the locks and which way you define what is behavior of the plant is normal and what is behavior of plant is uh, just a uh, consequence of an error? Uh, uh, is it possible? That... Maybe some, there is some techniques or what, what, what kind of mechanism do you use to separate uh... errors, behavior, of the plant in errors from behavior of uh, uh, the plant uh, as, a no, as a normal behavior but without some faults yeah but the the error which is uh, it's a concept of what we are thinking uh, it's supposed to be error or uh, other thing means uh, it's like it's a normal operations like uh, if it's for a drill or something it goes down and drills and after that it comes back so maybe if it's uh, drilling for the long time and it never comes back that would be a possible error so it's each error scenario is also we need to identify and uh, we need to define it what is an error um, then uh, if it's some particular uh, part is happening uh, that particular sequence is happening in the uh, plan model then uh, we can measure it. that is an error. So uh, it's uh, up to us uh, to tell that uh, which is uh, an error and which is a proper operation. And we need to define that. And uh, if we are training the plan model according to the normal behavior, then uh, it will go like that. Then if you are seeing uh, if you want to analyze some uh, particular scenarios, then we need to uh, check uh, what it happens, uh, that particular scenario in our model and see how it behaves. So it's a quite complicated question to identify and it's, it's a hard to uh, tell that uh, which one is an error and which is the proper behavior. Uh, it depends upon how we model how we train the normal model and after that uh, sees the behavior uh, for a different type of operation so every different type of new operation maybe can be if you want to consider as an error then that would be otherwise if it's not an error then we need to add that as a normal behavior and need to build the model according to according to that then if that particular sequence of actions comes again then we will verify it. Uh, so that won't be any problem. So every new problem, any new events or sequence of events can be or taken as a uh, error. Or if it's not, then we need to add it as a normal behavior and build the model again. OK, thank you. thank you. Thank you. And uh, the question, my question was, about uh, uh, how comfortable for you, how it is comfortable, comfortable for you to use linear temporal logic to formulate the requirements. Is it okay for you? Uh, it's for you. Uh, 
Are you uh, comfortable, feel, feel fine uh, when you use linear temporal logic? Uh, means I didn't get you. Can you come again? I, uh, I, I mean that uh, as, as to me, it's uh, it is very un uncomfortable for me yeah, 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 to that's use true. linear yeah, temporal yeah. logic because it's, it's in my opinion it's yeah, not yeah, the yeah. human yeah, so, nature of this yeah. notation it's very difficult and uh, sometimes and yeah. I see my colleagues is very frequently do some errors to formulate they yeah. uh, try to formulate one requirement but in fact yeah, they I, formulate yeah, something different. Uh, can yeah, you agree on that? Yeah, uh, because uh, it's a uh, normal people, or uh, even if the developers itself feel difficult to write uh, specification particular to that, and even we need to identify what's the requirement, and we need to so just to type and see what it goes. It's very difficult, but if it's there any technique uh, uh, that can be normal thing, what we are need to check can be converted into this temporal logic or something that would be better. So, but uh, that's a problem. It says even if you are using this tool chain, it's completely automatic or something like that. If you are saying so, but the problem is we need to uh, ourselves create the specifications for the our system and need to verify it. So there is a lot of manual intervention will come into the play uh, in this side. Uh, this side, so uh, it's pretty hard to do it uh, that part. And uh, if it's automatically identifies the specification and requirements according to the given scenarios, uh, then that would be wonderful. But uh, unfortunately, here we are using the same method uh, to use this. Uh, do you looking for some uh, alternative? Uh, do you maybe analyze some alternative uh, means to create the requirement for example natural uh, yeah. language or maybe some uh, some some kind of standard that there is rcm requirement specification something okay. like this no actually do you know I do you look for never, it? yeah it's uh, i got a comment from uh, this particular thing it's on one of the meeting uh, the conference as well so but actually need to uh, if you want to build the tool chain it's more better actually i i need to just to see this type of uh, controller i mean so this type of uh, particular automatic tool uh, to generate this that would be very helpful uh, so thank you for that i will look on that and see how it behaves all right thank you thank you dear colleagues some question Okay, okay, if there is no some question, maybe some f feedback for, uh, for our uh, keynote speaker. Okay, I, I want to be not the first, but if, if there are no other uh, candidates, I can uh, have a couple of words. Yes. yes. Uh, okay, yes. For, 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 first of all, I, I, I must say that I very much appreciate this opportunity and I enjoyed a lot uh, the questions which were asked to Midun. I think this is a most important experience in learning and being PhD student to go through uh, such seminars. And uh, as I, uh, I think uh, through your PhD study, you should do 20 such seminars uh, in different groups worldwide. And then, then you are ready for defense. Um, <laughs> so, and uh, I'm very, very grateful to Sergey, for example, for asking very basic definitions questions because this is like a classics. Uh, you need to know what you what you are talking about, and you need to uh, be very careful about definitions of all the terms you use. Um, and maybe if I may, I will answer some of these questions, uh, just uh, just some of them, so that. Uh, maybe later we will do some homework with Midun, but uh, for now, for the audience of this seminar, maybe it's important that uh, we have a common understanding. I, I think uh, one thing what was missed, and there was a very good question on comparing this with other notations like Ptolemy or MATLAB, 
the very reason we are using this uh, function block notation is that we believe that it's already ready for deployment. It's a programming language. It can be the control part of that can be immediately uploaded to a PLC. So it's a source code of the PLC. And we have such PLCs in our, in our lab. Uh, actually, they are running this very language. We cannot do with MATLAB or we cannot do that with LabVIEW. But uh, this ice blocks connected to this drilling machine exactly running this very program. So we take this very program, we connect. Uh, uh, so instead of interfacing to real sensors and actuators, to real machine, we just substitute uh, the internals of that block, which represents interface. We substitute it with a simulation model and we run the simulation. And once we have uh, done the simulation, we deploy. But the problem is that maybe we cannot see all the problems in simulation. And that's why we use uh, additionally model checking. So then again, and this is important to kind of to, to emphasize, uh, that was uh, also, I think, um, kind of between the lines of some other questions. It's important to emphasize that there is a, a manual but systematic method. So we take the simulation model that may be using uh, floating point variables, as uh, Sergey was asking. Maybe it's using uh, the simulation model using floating point variables, but if we try to generate a SMV model for that, we will get into troubles, we know for sure. Even, even if we use new XMV, which is uh, for hybrid system simulation. So that's why we developed this manual uh, methodology like a pathway how we reduce complexity by discretizing and uh, by uh, like adding non-determinism instead of those uh, places in the model which may be described by uh, these uh, floating point variables. Some conditions on some state machine you know, transitions that described by floating point variables, we know that uh, we will uh, stuck with a verification for sure. Uh, at that point, so we substitute it with just non-determinism. So we're simplifying the model. And at the same time, we're not only simplifying the model, but by introducing non-determinism, we're actually creating more options. So we're adding, uh, like we increasing the space in, in, in some different directions. And we're adding more opportunities, more evolutions of the model. And that's why we kind of uh, helping uh, verifier to face more uh, more different situations in the plant behavior. So that's, that's the idea behind it. Okay. So, uh, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, speaking about, um, cyber physical systems. Yeah. Like speaking about closed loop, for example, uh, yeah, we use a classic control, uh, like control systems definition of what is closed loop. There is a, block representing uh, controller, block representing uh, plant. In our case, we have multi-closed loop architecture where we have a modular plant and we have modular controller. So that's, that's one specific uh, feature of our approach. We experiment with multi-agent, so to speak, approach to control where each mechatronic component has some smarts and this like internal brains of mechatronic components, they talk to each other and in collaboration, we get the overall, we achieve overall needed behavior of our machine. And this is like main reason actually, in my view, why we use formal verification, because we like, like Lego blocks, we put together when we, when we uh, design manufacturing system, we put together some components and uh, we want them to start working immediately, like push the button and everything works. And that's why we don't have enough time and we don't want to spend much time on, uh, you know, long testing of that because this basic requirement is quickly reconfigure system, bring new components uh, in the same way, reconfigure software, push the button and get the system working. And we see theoretically, what we could do is, okay, so we reconfigured the system, we put together these components, we 
drop it into a uh, model checking uh, tool chain and quickly get, uh, automatically get uh, the result, whether there are some errors so we can commission it and make it working. So that's like the whole idea be behind this, why we do this. Okay, but thanks a lot. That's, that's really useful um, for all of us and I think for, especially for Midun to like uh, be through this uh, nice seminar. For all, thank, thank, thank you, Valeri. <laughs> thank you, Valeri. Okay. And the, I don't know, one question just for Valeri. The definition of uh, cyber physical system, I'm okay. on yeah. your point. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a very, very nice uh, question. I don't know, I, uh, well, maybe if you've been to my talk at, uh, at the conference earlier this year, I was uh, discussing some definitions of cyber physical systems and uh, it's a really vague thing. I, I read some, but it's not a mathematical term, first of all, right? So it's, it's a still like kind of uh, public wisdom. Uh, uh, there are many, many definitions, but they are not expressed in the pure mathematical terms. Uh, in my view, uh, there is uh, like uh, in our case, what we mean by cyber physical system is that uh, we have a component system uh, where physical components like parts of machines have some embedded cyber elements like micro nano nano controllers that are embedded into this, so they carry some of the uh, like um, logic of behavior and uh, essentially uh, they collaborate with other components and this collaboration on the physical layer done through uh, wireless interface. It's, it's a kind of common in industry 4.0 to use this terminology cyber physical system whenever you have some wireless communication between machines or parts. So, it's, it's not strictly defined, but in that context, in, in this industry 4.0 German kind of definition, they uh, adopted this uh, Kuber physiology system and uh, term for this specific meaning. Whenever they use a lot of like wireless com wirelessly communicating components, uh, uh, of course, I know where it's coming from, but not everyone knows where it's coming from to that field. But when it, when it came to industrial automation, I think it has a strong connotation of this kind of modularity and wireless communication between. Okay, thank you, thank you. I can add you that about, about uh, discrete, discrete signal. I can point out that Discrete signal is uh, uh, some nature from the PLC world because uh, PLC connected with the uh, environment, with mechanical parts or something by uh, analog to digital uh, and digital to analog uh, devices, so-called ADC and DEC and this mm -hmm. device is discrete. So there is no, uh, it's, uh, I, I don't understand why Sergey asked it because, uh, ask uh, this question because uh, Sergey is from Chimera uh, domain. Chimera domain is so that's the kind of uh, hybrid automata and so on, where is uh, some kind of OD, uh, mm. ordinary uh, differential equations and so on. There is, yeah. uh, it, it needs some kind of flawed uh, variables, but in the real world, in the world of PLC, it's, uh, it's very rare. That's really discrete. We deal with discrete signals. Well, well, well you know, Vladimir, yeah. I, I just, um, I'm sitting and looking at the PLC in my desk, and this PLC, like this back of machine, has a standard modules, which can emit uh, actually analog signals, right? So. Yes. So they are standard, these uh, analog discrete and discrete analog converters, they are embedded inside this module, yes. these small, this small slices in the PLC. Yes, yes. So we, we cannot provide with PLC some arbitrary, uh, arbitrary value of the signal. It's just always discrete. Uh, 
and uh... well well we we, we uh, uh send in software we send uh, uh like a floating point data and it appears as an analog signal from the output uh, but with, the with float the... point signals are then uh discreted by by the uh for example no yeah, well, UHT there, and source. <laughs> the, the, How many there, there bits? Some, maybe twelve there, bits, there or maybe, and so on. And yes, of course. Uh, yes. And then uh, the corresponding voltage or current is generated. It's it's very really, uh, kind of uh, finite, fi really finite, finite sets of the value you, you can produce. And yeah. so, as as to the uh, talk, I also. Uh, I must say that it's, uh, I very appreciate this kind of our uh, conversation. It's, I think it's very valuable because uh, the questions that seems may be very simple uh, really become some, some point of difficulties to communicate with a different group of uh, researchers. For example, I, I still I cannot catch uh, I mean, in, in my opinion, uh, when you state that we formulate the requirements, really, I think it means that we know which way, which is the algorithm of the plant, which is the right algorithm of the plant. So, and this is the case because uh, the plant is also have uh, the creator that. Yeah. Uh, process engineer and so and mm -hmm. and census uh, actuator it's not uh, obituary placed on the plant it's uh, placed in the right place because it uh, there is some function uh, the process engineer assume the, the plant must do and so yeah. on. But it's, it's a question for me because the if you uh, speak about the plant we don't speak about abstract artifacts we speak as well as uh, about the algorithm the plant must do so it's question. well i mean this is engineering uh, we are we are we all doing we look uh, at uh, what we midun has presented we look at it as a part of engineering process and engineering process is a human process right so yes yes uh, yes it, it is absolutely. it is uh, right. you know absolutely subject to errors it's subject to misunderstandings uh, all the specifications um, you know they are adjusted as uh, the work is being done and sometimes surprises are discovered in the specifications all the time are discovered uh, and this is like an iterative process so so the developers of, of the plant they come up with some specifications implementers implement then they start commissioning and they find that uh, something doesn't work because there was error in the specification yes this happens all the time like as we speak a thousand instances around the world uh, yes. Automation engineers discover these uh, errors in specifications. Yes. Yes, and to, to make some conclusions of our webinar, I uh, my pro my proposal is to uh, use this uh, great uh, experiment and duplicate it. For example, I uh, I am very glad to. <clears throat> see here our uh, uh, colleagues from St. Petersburg, I mean Victor Dubinin, and maybe I ask for Victor Dubinin to make some uh, talk about uh, his current work, and also I ask for Valery uh, Vyatkin maybe to produce some new talker yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're already in the room. It's very... I, I, I already, I, I already volunteered them to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Okay. At, at your seminar, and they, they know about that, so uh, that's why they, they, they came today. Yes, so to, yes, to, because, to see, because to see what they are facing in the future. Because uh, the talk of, of uh, Midhan 
Midhome is very great. It's very interesting for us. And we plan to make some collaborative project maybe between you and us. That's really yep. great. For example, now I some make some announce. We make uh, now we work now uh, on uh, the requirements engineering problem on the language for requirement engineering. Maybe a month yeah, ago that's... we 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 published uh, the paper about event-driven temporal logic pattern that as we uh, think that is more human oriented uh, kind uh, notation to formulate requirements so, sounds very good now we work about transition from uh, edtl notation to ltl notation and, and so on this maybe mm -hmm. uh, will be helpful maybe interesting for your group and uh, we are really yeah i i can immediately asset. tell that this is interesting for us because we we are not uh, focusing much on requirements, but uh, this is a very interesting complementary part. So which we could like win-win collaborate because we do not have much experience in that, but we would gladly integrate this work into our work. It may be very interesting. So dear colleagues, some uh, words, maybe somebody uh, want to say some words about the events so dear colleagues so uh, i <clears throat> thank you all all the participants of our webinar and uh, i say that uh, our webinar our this experience is very great and i say hello to everyone and uh, see you next time and stay in touch yes thank you so our thank you is... thank you very much yeah, I, thank I, you so much. I, I, I sent you the link to the uh, the records uh, as soon as possible. Okay.